I want to welcome you to Prodigal Son Ministries podcast. You know, this podcast was started in 2018. And today in 2024, we have been on an In Him Scripture study that started in June 21st of 2021. And it has, this is the second time that we have went through these scriptures on this card. And the reason we're going through this, this card the second time is because we want the, we want everybody to get a good round, strong, uh, of uh, understanding of what, what God's word says about them and who they have been made to be in Christ Jesus. But there's a second reason. You know, we, we done these videos on, uh, on our, our Sunday deal and they've started coming out on Sunday. They've been coming out on Tuesday for a lot of years, but we started doing an in him scripture study years ago that started going into the prison and on tablets and things. And, and the Lord's led me to redo those videos and, and, and redo them and, and get a better sound quality, a better video quality on them so that more people will pick them up. And so that's what we're doing. And I decided to go back and do this card again on the audio podcast and then do a recap that comes out on Sundays for the people that don't get to come to church. So that's what this whole thing is has turned into. You know, this podcast started in 2018. I started going into the local jail to, uh, in 2018 also. And, and it's always been, been geared around, been focused on who we are in Christ. And that's our calling. That's what God has called us to do and to teach people who they are in their salvation. Because I think there, there's, there's a lot of need for that out here. There's people out here in this world that have been saved the biggest part of their life, but they've never known how confident they can be and how strong they could be in their salvation because they've never been taught what Jesus Christ died to do for them. And when we come to that place in our lives that we know what he done and stand confident in it, my goodness, uh, I, I'm going to tell you what God needs out of his children, out of his born-again children, the church. He needs confident people knowing where they stand with him and with all the boldness that, that, that they can muster in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior. He needs us to be out here in this world teaching people what he says and what he wants us to walk in and walk, walk, walk confident in. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He wants us to be confident in who we are so that we can walk strong in this world and be strong in what he has said to us, for us, and about us in the truth in his word. So this is the, this is week 10 of your place in him. And we're going back through this, this scripture card that we give away in jails and prisons all over. I want to invite you to, to contact this ministry. I'll give you one of these cards. If, if you're in a facility like a, a jail or a prison that you can't have the physical card, I promise you, I'll make a copy of it. I'll mail you a copy of this so that you can have these scriptures. We want you to have these scriptures. But if you're listening to this thing on a tablet, go back to week one and start writing these scriptures down. And I promise you, we're not going to, we're not going to skip a one of them. We're going to go all the way through this thing. 41 weeks. This is week 10. So just get ready to, to be taught what God says about his born again people. In Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior. What, what Christ died to give you and to make you in this world. That's what we're going to teach you. That's what God's going to teach you through the truth in his word. My prayers for today come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to see and know and realize, understand just how much God loves them. And, and I want you to understand the same thing. You know, if, if the world could just realize how great God's love is for them. You know, I pray for every person on this planet that they come to realize the love, the mercy, the grace, and the goodness 
that God has for them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this... I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he has opened my eyes and he shows me more and more every day just how much he loves me. Oh, I thank God that you can do the same thing and it'll all come through his word. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Lord, use me for your honor and your glory. Touch my mind and touch my mouth. Help me be the light in the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to be in Colossians 2 and 10 today. And this is such a special scripture. And I want you to understand something, that that in Christ Jesus, we are complete. No, no, uh, n- nothing we have, nothing we have to do, but all that he has already done. Our, our redemption, our reconciliation, our justifying is complete in him. Now, let me read this. Colossians 2 and 10. Now, you are, you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. It says, the New Living Translation says, you, so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. In other words, he's, uh, Paul's saying he's, he's, the, he's the ultimate authority in what he just spoke to you, and that is that you're complete in him. The Amplified Classic says, And you are in him, made full, and having come to fullness of life in Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature, and he is the head of all rule and authority in every angelic principality and power. My goodness, this is a this is so true. And many I'm I'm talking about many millions, probably hundreds of millions of people miss this. They I live for years just in a downtrodden state because 
I didn't know this simple truth. I had, I had made Jesus Lord of my life. I had been born again. I knew it. But there was something there that I just couldn't get over from the time that I got born again, from the day I got born again. The devil told me, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. Well, this is something that I didn't realize. I didn't have to do it. God had already done it in Jesus Christ. And I was complete. I am complete in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And, and, and my goodness, when people come to understand that, that we are completed in Him. We are born again. We're justified. We're reconciled. We're restored to friendly relations with God. But he, our sin separated us, and Jesus died and took the penalty of the penalty of that sin upon Himself and died a sinner's death, so that we could walk free. Now, until I come to the point and the understanding of uh, for my life, for my Christian life, that I had been made complete in Christ Jesus, that there, there was something that just uh, just plagued my life and that was doubt that that was fear and unbelief that I was where I was supposed to be now I can't I can't say that I've since I've come to these understandings and these truths that their doubt don't come but I'm going to tell you what quickly comes when doubt does come and that is God's word that's why I'm so adamant on doing this these scriptures and 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 getting them in your heart so that you can you know you can cast that thought down because doubt and fear unbelief is from the devil god 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 don't want you spending one second in doubt about who you are in christ about if you're born again or not now, see there's a lot of born again christians that that are uns- uncertain and worried about where they stand with God because they don't know that Colossians 2 and 10 says that when they made Jesus Lord, that they have been made complete in him. That's finished. Uh, the Bible says when, when Christ uh, died on the throne or died, died on the cross, that he, the last words he says, it is finished, complete. And when he died, and was and was raised from the from the dead on the third day. That was it. the 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 thing was done, and and he had paid the penalty for every person on this planet to walk free from their sin. All they have to do is make him Lord. All they have to do is believe that Jesus Christ done what He said He done, and say, Lord, come into my heart and me into my life and save me. Be Lord of my life. You are Lord of my life by faith. I know that. Let me read the Amplified Classic again of Colossians 2 and 10. It says, and you are in him. Now listen, this is talking about a born again Christian. It said, made full and having come to fullness of life in Christ. You are too. Well, no, you too are filled with. With the God, Head, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach f- fuel, full spiritual maturity, or stature rather. And He is the Head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. In other words, Christ is Head of all. And, and He stands for us, telling us that we have been put in full spiritual stature. <laughs> and that, what else can I say? Complete is it. It's complete. You can't add nothing to it. I mean, to make it any better than it is. Because, look, I, I, I thought about this earlier this morning. I, I want you to understand something. That when you make Jesus Lord and the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and you're born again and, and you've got God's Spirit dwelling in you. You've got the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelling in you. That, it, it, that eternally links you 
to God himself, to our to, to your Lord and Savior. And you're part of the, the whole equation. And and people people have this works mentality that they've got to to gut it out to do all that they can do to just to make it through. No, no, that's what Satan wants you to ta- want you to to do is just keep trying, keep trying, keep working to, for the prize. Now I know Paul said he's he's striving for towards the mark, and I I know that I understand that, but but Paul knew who he was. Paul's the one that's wrote all these epistles to to help us to know, know that we're complete. Not in our goodness, not in our righteousness. We talked about that last week. Paul said it. He said he said all the righteousness, you know, that 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 was great, but yeah, that wasn't what done it. It was his faith in Christ. And he wanted us to know it. He wanted us to to stand up and and realize that that if when we decide who we are in Christ Jesus makes us complete, we're in Him. And yeah, this may like may say, may seem like beating a dead horse or you know just beating the same old drum over and over. But but I'm gonna tell you something. The more majority of the population of this planet don't know this. The majority of the Christians in this world don't know this. They're not. They're not assured. They're not abiding in the 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 truth of God's word. They read these scriptures, but they think, "Boy, I wish I felt that way. I wish I had that kind of faith, or I wish I had that kind of assurance." Well, you can't have that assurance. I mean, my my goodness, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead that's in me is in them. And all they've got to do is take God, God at His word. And that's the sad part about it. When you, when you don't believe that you're complete in Him, guess what you do? You, you, uh, ask, you, you end up, this is, this is a bold statement, but you end up calling God a liar, saying that Jesus wasn't good enough to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and make you complete. Now, this, uh, this is a, the devil has has done his homework in just tearing the the Christian church the church down through this very point that they just feel like they'll never ever measure up. That's what that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to to be in that state of mind because when we're in that state of mind, we can't uh, we can't advance. We can't help anybody else overcome it. But I'm going to declare to you today, if you've made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, you are complete, complete in him. And you have you have put been put linked up with the Lord of all lords and King of kings, the creator of the world. Heaven, the, our heavenly father is your father. And you he says you're complete. Don't ever argue with that. Now, I'm going to ask you a question today. Are you listening to this and thinking, my goodness, I wish I had that kind of, just that kind of assurance. I've never been born again. I, I wish I could c- come to the place that I could be saved. Well, God's not going to knock you in the head. He's not going to drag you to the altar and make you get born again. It's your decision. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how easy it is. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and if thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's it. It's all it takes to be born again. Do that today. It's so easy. I ask people all the time, I said, do you believe in Jesus Christ and what he done? Absolutely. I said, you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and was raised on the third day for your justification? They say, absolutely. I've always believed that. I said, you're one step away from being born again. Declare him Lord of your life. 
Say, Lord, come into my heart and into my life. Forgive me of my sins and be Lord and Savior of my life. I declare you as Lord and Savior of my life. And I believe that God raised you from the dead to justify me. That's how easy salvation is. Religion says you got to grovel at his feet and, and cry and wail and do all this. No, it's a decision. It is a decision to come to him. Come to him and, and, and be complete in him. Be, I'm talking about be born again and, and know without a shadow of doubt what he's done in your life. And don't ever let the devil or your flesh or anything else change your mind of it. So today, I'm going to tell you, may Jesus Lord, confess him as Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Glory to God. Hey, listen, go to our website and get this phone app. Get this phone app and start getting these podcasts coming to your phone six days a week. Sunday through Friday is is where we, we take Saturday off, and I'm not, a, um, I'm not a Sabbath keeper or anything like that, but the Lord said to rest, and we do our best to rest on Saturday. Uh, but six days a week, we put this podcast out for the ones that want to be strengthened. And it's not has anything to do with me. It has everything to do with him. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. I pray God, my, Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything you sow into this ministry. If you're not a partner, become a partner. Pray about becoming a partner and reaching out to the world. Reaching out to the world and helping us do what God's commissioned us to do. And that is to change their mind about how they feel about who they are in Christ Jesus. And if they're not born again, to get them gloriously saved. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.